In this video I'm going to be showing you 10 accessories you can add to your sim rig to take your experience to the next level. Now I don't mean pedals or handbrakes which are products you find on most sim rigs. I'm talking about the accessories that you start to add after you've got the essentials. Now I have most of these and no this isn't a sponsored video but it means I can speak with some confidence about their effectiveness and if they're worth buying and also their quality. First up are sim racing gloves. So why wear gloves? Well Firstly, they stop your hands from sweating all over the wheel, which keeps it relatively dry. And if you're driving for long periods of time, you can turn the wheel with a good solid grip and not have it slide around. But they also keep your wheels nice and clean and they prevent damage to the wheels, certainly with Alcantara grips. And sim racing steering wheels aren't cheap. My Fanatec V2 Formula wheel cost me £400. So by wearing gloves, I'm protecting my investment and the Alcantara from my hands. The last thing I want to be doing is getting it re-gripped every left, six months left. due to damage. Now there are plenty of makes of sim racing gloves out there like clear Simhound, left. but I personally clear use left. sim racing gloves from Feel. Now Feel aren't sponsoring this video, however I do have three pairs of the Feel sim racing gloves to give away for three lucky winners. So stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can win yourself one of these amazing pair of gloves. Next up is an integrated keyboard and mouse and if you're like me and you have limited space to attach a keyboard tray and a mouse play or you just don't want to fork out for both of those then an integrated mouse and keyboard like the Logitech K400 Plus is a brilliant option. I can pick this up and put it on my lap and use the keyboard elements and the mouse elements with just one device. It's wireless which frees up precious USB slots on my SimRig PC but it also limits the number of cables running around my rig as well. Now it isn't rechargeable which sounds like a bad thing but I've had rechargeable keyboards and mice in the past. I've had about four and in my experience I always forget to charge them so I would have an opportunity to jump in the rig, I'd turn everything on, I'd pick up the keyboard and it's not charged so I can't log into the PC and I can't do I can't run a race. It takes two AA batteries so if it is flat I can quickly just change them and jump in and drive but in the 18 months I've owned this I've not changed the batteries once clearly I need to drive more anyway with prices starting new at just under 35 pounds this is a perfect accessory for your sim racing kit next up's a gaming headset and if you're like me and you have family then you might find yourself having to drive in the evenings when other people are in the house making noise watching TV or sleeping and because of that a great gaming headset is a must now I drive in VR so my audio is sorted but I've used the Philip SHP 9500s in the past and they're a great piece of kit. Cost new is around 80 to 90 pounds so it's an affordable option. Next up are racing socks or shoes. Now I don't own a pair of these yet but I do know a few people who do and they rate these very very highly. Incidentally if anyone wants to send me some to review I'd be happy to take a look. But anyway like the gloves there are plenty around. Again see Hound to have these and there have been some good solid reviews on them too. They're very reasonably priced at around £25. Now you don't have to buy sim racing socks or shoes. I personally wear slippers that have sort of sticky dots on the bottom of them but that's probably because I'm really old. But I do find after some time that my feet begin to hurt so I may invest in a set. Next up might seem like an odd one but it's a cup or a bottle holder and we all know how important it is to stay hydrated and with one of these attached to your rig you can jump in and drive for long stints and never be dehydrated again. There are quite a few out there that you can buy for around about £10. Most come with a few mounting options so just check that it can be attached to your rig before you buy it. Next up is a butt kicker or a base shaker. Now these make your rig come to life by reacting to the telemetry data that is coming from your PC. So information such as driving over curbs, engine revs, upshifts, downshifts. The base shakers pick up these signals, vibrate accordingly and bring a whole new level of immersion to your experience. Now the most common one are the butt kicker range, the Gamer Pro and the Plus and these are single base shakers but all of these come with an amplifier to drive them. Prices for butt kickers start from around about £279. The Dayton base shakers are also very popular and very good, starting from around £50 each, but you'll need to buy the amp separately. 
Next up is a wind sim, and essentially, like a butt kicker, it uses the telemetry from the game to reproduce the same feeling of wind speeding up or slowing down based on the speed of the car. Some models even have something called wind curving, which changes the wind direction as the car turns as you drive it around the track. Now I have one of these and it does do a good job when driving open wheelers, but if you only drive tin tops or GT3s or anything like that, it can also turn into a very expensive way to cool yourself down on those hot summer days. In my opinion, it's not a need, it's more of if you want it or not. Next up is a button box and essentially allows you to map functions from the game to buttons on the button box. So as an example, you could map the ignition function from the game to a button on your box. So like in real world racing cars, you can fire up the ignition at the touch of a button. The same with the start button, but they can do so much more than just that. You can map DRS, traction control, brake bias. You can have a lights button, a pit confirm button, a windscreen wipers button. The list is endless. There are many button boxes available and you can even get those that combine the Elgato Stream Deck into one too, allowing for an almost infinite number of customizable buttons. Next up, it's a USB hub. Now, these can be very helpful in sim racing if you don't have enough USB ports on your motherboard on your PC. And you'll run out of them very, very quickly as you add more and more accessories or devices. You'll need to buy a powered hub and not an unpowered hub because an issue you might face regarding the performance of a connected device is power delivery fails when using unpowered USB hubs and this can result in the device repeatedly disconnecting or just not even powering up at all. Powered USB hubs simply don't have this issue as power is delivered through a standard power plug which results in consistent delivery of power and it puts very little stress on the PC itself. Costs of these start from around £20 and are so worth it in my opinion. And finally it is a dash and a dash is essentially a physical piece of hardware like a dashboard that you see inside the car in the sim title and it's typically attached to your wheel base. It essentially shows you information about the car and the track, things like what gear you're in, revs, what tyre temperatures are, traction control settings, lap times and so much more. There are many products available, I use the Dash from SimDash, again links down in the description below and I've had it for many many years and when combined with the lovely dashboard app it is just absolutely perfect. So this brings us on to the Sim Racing Gloves giveaway from Feel. Now to win yourself a pair of these, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, you share the video, and you post the word Silverstone down in the comments below. And that's it, you're entered into the competition, and I'll be picking the three names at random on Saturday, October the 28th. So good luck to everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.